Hello there folks, it's Roger Quinn here and in this video I'm going to show you and demonstrate how to create a comic art dot tone pattern or half tone pattern if you like a bit like that. There's one in black and white and here's one in colour. This effect is done in Photoshop and I won't go into all the details of how the cartoon itself has been created. Uh, there's some other videos that I've made and will be making to explain those processes, but we'll just concentrate on the dot tone effect. The idea of this effect is to try and emulate the more traditional printed comic look, uh, which uh, in traditional comics, the various half tones were achieved by uh, basically breaking up the tone into small black dots, and in the case of color, small uh, CMYK dots, okay? I like to use this technique uh, mainly as a visual language thing in that I like my comics to look uh, like their comics. So that's the reason why I use this technique. There's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, this is really just one particular way. I'm sure you can discover other ways of doing this. But as I said, I'll just demonstrate the method that I use in Photoshop. And uh, it is essentially based on this uh, technique. I'll just set up a new document. Uh, and that will do. <clears throat> Pardon me, I have a bit of a cold. Uh, the resolution here is fairly important, okay, because it does affect the size of the dot. Now, I'll explain in some other material later on why I use a resolution that's that size there, but I'm working with 200 pixels per inch. I'm just going to set up a small document that's 10 centimeters for the moment. Uh, the other thing that's actually important here is I'm working in RGB mode. Even though I'm going to create a black and white effect, this is important for the way that Photoshop creates this particular effect. Anyway, so in a nutshell, this is how it works. I'm just going to create a section, a selection there. Go in and grab a grey tone. Uh, many different ways you can choose grey tones. Um, I actually use, generally, the Pantone library when I do this. Uh, that's so I can get consistent colour. But so long as you're using some method to give consistent selection, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to just use this where I've, uh, the regular picker where I've turned on web colors so that I can see those distinct color areas. Of course, I could also type in the percentage down the side here. Anyway, that's my foreground color. And just for the demonstration, I'll just fill that uh, with foreground, like so. And there it is. And the uh, basis of this is really applying one of Photoshop's filters. I'm using CS6, but uh, this effect is available in previous versions of Photoshop. You might just find you've got to search around a little bit for where that's actually hiding in previous versions. Anyway, the technique I use is called the Halftone Pattern, which is one of the sketch filters. Okay, Nothing particularly tricky to it. Um, the only hard part is experimenting with the size and the contrast setting. Okay, um, I've found that with a setting which is just there that I'm using a, a dot size of about 2 and a contrast of 30. Incidentally too, make sure you're choosing the dot pattern type. Um, you could of course experiment with circles and lines and things, but um, I'm just using that. And uh, a couple of interesting things are going to happen here which you'll possibly start to notice. Um, I'll hit OK on this. As I said, that size and contrast will be greatly dependent on the resolution you're working with. So be sure to experiment with that, particularly if you're printing your comic. And have a look at what it's done there. Um, I'll just zoom up a bit so you can see. And it's actually put in a dot representation, if you like, of that grey tone. It's also, though, represented what was originally the white background with a grey tone. Okay, this is... Um, one of Photoshop's bizarre and peculiar ways of working, and it had to do with the contrast setting that I was using. Okay, so um, what you'll probably find is that you'll need to restrict your selections in your comic work, and I'll show you that in a minute what I'm talking about, just to make sure the tone goes in the area that you want. Okay, now just to explain one other thing, I'll just undo that, and if you're wondering why am I doing that in grayscale mode, uh, sorry, in RGB instead of grayscale, well, if I change that to grayscale, and I apply that same filter, that's what it does. Okay, it uh, makes a very different calculation of what it sees as the tone I want to work with, and it's now converted that gray to virtually a black. 
okay? And I found that that's a whole lot harder to predict what it's going to do. And so what I do is I tend to work in RGB mode for my comic work. And then when it's ready to print, or if I'm using it for screen delivery, if it's ready to you know, send off for you know, an EPUB or something like that, um, that's when I do the conversion. Okay. Anyway, let's jump to an example uh, where that's applied. So I'll go to the original um, file here. This is a page from a comic uh, that I did as a, as a part of a graphic novel collection. And there's the original frame from the page without any tone applied. Now, some of you might also notice that um, there's some blue line work on that. Um, that's another reason actually why I work in full color mode for the time being. I tend to sketch in light blue pencil. A lot of comic artists do that. Um, it's non-reproducible blue. And I leave that in there um, whilst I'm working over the top. Um, and you can do that, of course, traditionally with regular inks, or you can also do it digitally, and I tend to do that digitally. But the principle's the same. So if you're wondering why is there blue there, that's why it's there. I can, of course, easily turn that off. All right. I've actually got a blue grid underneath that too, which I use to work out where my frames are going to be, but I'll talk about that in another video. Anyway, applying the tone, as I said before, I'll just throw it over the whole frame there for the moment. Okay, so I just made a selection and I'm going to make sure that I have created a new layer for this. And I'll call it halftone dots. And the positioning, of course, of the layer is very important. I'm just going to make sure that that's sitting underneath my ink layers because I want the black ink to be on top of the effect. Okay, now what I use, uh, an effect I use a lot is in fact not to put in a flat tone, but I actually use a gradient uh, quite a bit. Okay, so I've got that same grey uh, that I was using before going to a white background. I'll just make sure that's set back to default so that it's definitely doing that. That was the grey I used. And then I use the gradient tool. Okay, and I'll just do a quick run across that whole frame. There it is. You'll notice my speech balloons are still in white. That's because they're on a different layer. Oh, and one thing I'm noticing there too, I didn't check to see whether that was a radial or a linear gradient. Okay, so up, up, up the top here, you get a choice of whether you want just a straight out, you know, radial, uh, sorry, flat grade from the gray to the white or a radial effect. And just, it doesn't really matter for the demo, so I'll actually leave it on that radial. It's, in fact, it's an effect I use quite a bit. And then I'll just apply that filter again. Now, just go and double check it, and you can see there an approximation in Photoshop's preview window there of what it's going to do. Now, just to, um, show you a, a better example there of what happens when you change the contrast. You do indeed get more distinct dots, okay, which you might like. Uh, you might like that effect. I actually prefer it when you can't see that distinct banding. I like it being more gradual. It's, for me, a better approximation of what that looks like as a printed page, uh, which is, of course, the effect that I'm trying to achieve. So if I can ramp that up a little bit there to about 35%. Dot size, as I was saying before, that just changes the size of the dots you're going to get. All right, so because I'm aware of the size that my page is going to be when it's printed, as I said, I've worked out for that resolution that a size of two works for me. You'll probably find you've got to experiment a bit with that. And if it's for a printed document, make sure you print it to check what size that dot really looks like, because you might find you, you don't end up with the printed result that you're after. Uh, and there it is. And so what we can see there is it's relatively flat gray tone in the center, and it's gradually dissolving out into the, uh, the other tone. I'll just zoom up a little bit there so you can see that. Okay, that's too far. You can see the pixels, but um, that's the idea. Now, um, on the original example there, you can see that what I've done is I've got different uh, tones going through different areas there. Uh, there's like a flat grey dot tone in that background mountain there. I've got a gradient tone in the top bit, a lighter tone in the mountains there. I use, uh, generally speaking, grey uh, tones changing by about 20% each time. I try and do that consistently so that the effect look cons looks consistent across the comic. Okay, and um, what I tend to do is I'll either make several layers as I'm going to actually just restrict the area where I want that. Or, of course, it's actually pretty easy to just, you know, apply the effect where you want it. And then, obviously, you can go in with your eraser and just make sure I'm on the right layer there. And you can just erase out 
you know, where you didn't want that tone effect to go. Okay, I'm just messing around with a mouse at the moment, but I normally use a graphics tablet, and that's a pretty fast way of working. So typically I'll do this, and I'll just either make restricted selections with the lasso tool and apply the effect, or I'll just do this on a number of layers and then combine all those layers together to form my dot tone layer. Okay, now just quickly on the um, color variant for that, there's a color page, well, there's the full page. Um, this was actually done at the same uh, size document. Okay, it's a, um, I forget the exact page measurement, that's really stupid of me, but anyway, it's sort of typical of your graphic novel style page. Um, I should look up the exact measurement, anyway, it doesn't matter. I've used exactly the same approach and exactly the same uh, setting in that uh, dot tone effect. Uh, and the difference is simply just working in color this time. So just to quickly show you how that works, once again, there's the original uh, inked page. And you can see my blue sketch there once again, still working in RGB, obviously, because I want this to be in color. And so I might just turn that off and I'll just go and apply one of those effects. So I put in a new color, uh, I'll call half tone dots, and it's actually once again fairly straightforward. I'm just sitting that layer behind my ink layer, and this time I'll I'll go in and show you, you know, one of the effects I would have used, and I think that original frame there was um, you know a reddish color blending to uh, yellow. So I just choose red as my foreground, yellow for my background. Uh, probably something like that. Now again, I just want to quickly remind any of the purists out there that when I did this for um, for real, when this was for the printed version, I did actually use Pantone colors. And I did that because I wanted a very distinct and restricted set of colors, once again, to emulate the effect used in original comics. Okay, I'm just using the color picker at the moment as a quick demo. Okay, the point being though that it's got to be a consistent way of choosing your color. You don't want to have slight variations in your yellow uh, as you, when you're trying to do this technique, because remember, you're trying to make it look like a traditional effect. Anyway, uh, the effect, the technique is pretty much the same. I'll just make a selection over, say, that frame there. There we go. And check that I'm on the right layer, which I am. Get my gradient. And this time I'll, I'll turn it off radial and I'll go back to straight out linear. Uh, just double check that you are on the standard gradient ramp there. Okay, sometimes you'll find that the last setting you use was, you know, a rainbow effect or something weird. So if you're not getting the same effect there, that might be all the problem is. And we'll apply that. Okay, I'll just do a top to bottom gradient. And we'll just apply that same filter again. And this time just have a look at what it does in color. No, oh, it's done it automatically there. I'll undo that. I'll make sure I go to the dialog. Okay, filter gallery, half tone pattern, same settings. Uh, you'll get the same thing happen again. If you change the contrast, you'll see that very distinct dot differences happen, but you, you can indeed start to see that banding. Now, some people like that effect. I don't particularly like it, um, but anyway, that's how, it, how you change it. And I think I'll just use what it was on there. Probably looks a bit different on the video there, but to my eye here, that looks pretty good. And there it is. Okay, so that's the effect. Pretty straightforward, really. Nothing much to it. Um, as I said, there's other ways of creating that effect. Um, I'm sure you can experiment with some of the features in, in Photoshop, but uh, I find that's really simple. Uh, pretty quick way of doing it, and I like Personally, and you can see there from the, the sample pages I'm showing, I kind of like mixing up you know, flat colors and gradient ramps as well as some of the dot pattern. And as I said at the beginning, my method, the reason for doing that is just to create a comic visual language. Uh, the style that I work in tends to be a fairly traditional looking ink line approach. Uh, so consequently, I like that traditional look in the coloring. Anyway, so there it is, half tone dots. Give it a go and um, good luck with it.